Hi, it's Wednesday afternoon, September 25th. Update here on Hurricane Helene just became a hurricane about an hour before this recording. Maximum winds are now 80 miles per hour and the storm is centered northeast of Cancun, Mexico, poised to enter the Gulf of Mexico and unfortunately strengthen significantly as it accelerates north-northeastward toward Florida, where significant to extreme impacts are expected depending on where you are relative to the landfall location. The entire state will see impacts of some kind. There are tropical related warnings and watches out for the entirety of the state, as well as inland in parts of Georgia and Alabama. We'll talk about all of that. First, we'll look at the structure of the storm. This is the zoomed in satellite loop. This is uh, Helene's center right in here. You can see the clear rotation to the eye. It is centered maybe just a little bit on the eastern side of where the mid-level rotation is evident in the animation here. Some slight vortex tilt from east to west. A little bit of south-southeasterly shear is present at the moment. You'll see some milky white cirrus clouds on the southeastern flank pushing toward the center, which is tilting the vortex over just a little bit. However, we see expansive radial outflow toward the west now, which we did not have yesterday. And you'll notice a bit of a hooking shape to these deep cauliflower shaped thunderstorm tops spiraling into the center, indicating that deep convection or thunderstorms are rotating around the south side and trying to wrap a closed eye wall, uh, forming the inner core that we've been waiting to see. The timing of that inner core formation is very important for determining Helene's peak intensity over the Gulf of Mexico and it's in the process of forming that core now. You'll see a little bit of a dark gray slot in here. There is some dry air getting wrapped in off of the Yucatan Peninsula. We talked about that possibility yesterday, hoping that this disrupts the inner core formation at least a little bit, and it is getting in there and preventing a closed eye wall from forming just yet. This is the Cuban radar out of Western Cuba, showing that hooking shape in the precipitation bands and the inner core is starting to form right in there where the center is, but you can see that dry slot where there's not so much rain. Hopefully that will continue to delay the formation of a closed eye wall, but it seems unlikely to delay it for very long. And the reason I say that is if we look at the aircraft reconnaissance data from the NOAA aircraft that just left the storm, this is showing where the center was when it left. Pressure continues to fall at 979 millibars now. And importantly, you'll see that in each quadrant, there is a well-defined maximum in the wind speeds being measured by the aircraft on all sides of the storm. This is the inner core wind field that has begun to contract a little bit and strengthen. And we're seeing hurricane force winds now on the eastern side and a well-defined wind maximum in all quadrants. This indicates that the storm structure is primed to take advantage of the warm ocean and continue intensifying likely at a quicker pace once we get into the overnight hours tonight and it's able to mix out some of this dry air on the eastern side. So although that is a limitation at this moment, it seems unlikely to last very long. The environment's also just going to continue improving. This is the water vapor satellite loop of the whole country here. Helene is near the bottom edge of your screen, but I'm showing you this in order to illustrate the upper level trough that we were talking about digging into the central part of the country. This is one of the main steering features that is going to usher the hurricane at an increasingly forward speed north northeastward toward Florida. It's also providing a poleward outflow connection. So you'll see these cirrus clouds emanating toward the north out of the hurricane in the upper levels. These cirrus clouds spreading over the skies in Florida are starting to link up with this upper level trough and that's going to promote upper level divergence in a large scale sense over the entire eastern Gulf of Mexico. This will help the hurricane intensify and also aid the expansion of its wind field. This is expected to be a rather large hurricane, particularly on the eastern side of the storm, which is why most of Florida is expecting impacts. Even though the track may be into the panhandle, the entire peninsula of Florida will experience strong winds and rains as Helene makes its journey north. This is the GFS model showing the 500 millibar or mid-level steering flow. Just to talk about the track for a moment here. This is the upper level low that you just saw on water vapor satellite imagery. This is valid for tomorrow morning, Thursday morning. This is Helene now beginning its acceleration toward the north northeast. And at this time, you'll see that there's a ridge east of the Carolinas. So there's a big ridge here. There's this uh, low pressure here, and there's a very strong and well-defined lane of flow towards the north-northeast between the two features. 
And this steering environment now is fortunately rather straightforward in the sense that there's not a lot of forecast uncertainty remaining, just a regular amount of wiggle room in the landfall location. This upper level low on previous runs now has been pretty stable. You'll note that it hasn't been moving around much on different runs of the GFS, which is a good thing. It means that significant changes seem unlikely at this point in time as we get within a couple days of landfall here. And you'll see that this ushers the storm northward into the Big Bend region of Florida, making landfall in Taylor County on the last couple of GFS model runs as it begins to do a dance with this upper level low and then swing and pivot toward the northwest as it moves through Georgia and we're expecting big rains in the southern Appalachians and throughout Georgia as it kind of makes this arcing curve into the southeastern U.S. The ECMWF model is similar to the GFS upper level low in a similar position. It's landfall point a little bit to the west. GFS was into Taylor County. ECMWF is more into Alligator Point, Wakola County and then moving close to Tallahassee. So you can see it moving inland here just a little bit farther west. Important to note that there's still a range of exact landfall locations that could occur. There's always some uncertainty in that. A few dozen miles could make a big difference for which county sees extreme winds and the very worst storm surge. But worth noting that the entire coastline of Florida will experience high winds and storm surge associated with Helene, regardless of the exact landfall. If we look at the GFS ensemble tracks here, it'll give you a sense of the uncertainty that remains. It's not the, the only model, and this is not the full depiction of the range, but it, I think it's a good representation as of right now. This is showing Helene moving uh, north northeastward across the Gulf, and you can see the spread in the 31 different possible versions of the future on this model. And you can kind of see how the uncertainty range in the landfall location is through this portion of the Florida Panhandle. We're talking about the Big Bend region over towards Apalachicola, Port St. Joe. And in general, all models are kind of between this Port St. Joe and Steinhatchee area of the coastline. So we're starting to progressively narrow this down. Again, still some shifting could occur, but this is you know high alert for these areas here of the central and eastern Florida Panhandle and the Big Bend area. Looking at the intensity forecast now, this is the HAFS B model from NOAA. This is the initialized simulated radar just showing that uh, east of Cancun here, it's doing a pretty good job initializing this hook and spiral structure in the radar imagery with this dry slot on the eastern and southeastern side. So it's depicting reality fairly accurately. And if we switch now to the surface wind depiction, everything in green is tropical storm force, 40 miles per hour or stronger. And you're going to see how fat the east side of this storm is as it comes up through the Gulf. And as we move forward in time, you'll see this inner ring of max wind begin to contract and amplify. And we're starting to see that occur in the aircraft measurements. This is the kind of structure that once it is formed and we have an eye wall actually closing off, could result in rapid intensification as the storm starts to move rapidly over very deep oceanic heat content values. Uh, the energy reservoir in the ocean is not expected to be much of a limitation for Helene as it moves across the Gulf, especially since it's moving quickly, giving it less time to deplete the water of its warmth. And so unfortunately, conditions are, are rather optimal for intensification. And you'll see the inner core you know, really get going, and this becomes a major hurricane in short order on this particular model. Some of these runs have gotten, you know, very strong category four or stronger. We don't yet know, you know, what the absolute peak will be. There will be an element of now casting to this. There always is. It seems like a pretty good bet at this point that the storm will be at least category three at its peak, and it could be higher depending on how things go here. But I want to show you also, you know, the tropical storm force wind field, 40, 50, 60 mile per hour winds butting up against the coastline of the Florida Peninsula. So although you'll see the core of this storm start moving toward the Big Bend region of Florida, you will also see all these winds scraping up against the western Florida Peninsula coastline as well. That doesn't just mean wind hazards, it means storm surge and water getting pushed into the coastline and inundating low-lying areas near the coastline. So be prepared if you're in you know, these bays and coastal areas uh, all the way up and down the Florida coastline. You'll see this go in and of course the maximum surge concern is here in the Big Bend where the very strongest winds in the storm core can funnel water into this small space, into these concave shaped section of the coastline, very exposed, low-lying marshy areas here where coastal water uh, can get flooded, you know, even miles inland when a major hurricane comes 
into regions like this. And you'll see that it, it makes landfall in kind of a similar area, kind of like Taylor or Jefferson County, as some of the other models that we saw, the GFS and ECMWF, it's in a similar position to those models, you know, going in here, you know, Tallahassee is, is in here in Leon County. And so the exact details of the track here will determine a lot about how certain towns and cities like that uh, will be impacted by the inner core of Helene as it moves ashore. This is the parent view of the half speed showing the upper level flow. This is Helene right here. And this is the 200 millibar flow showing that trough over the South Central US. And this is gonna show you that connection with the upper level outflow becoming unfortunately, you know, rather optimal for intensification as it streams northward into this jet streak, which you can see in red here, this acceleration of the upper level flow over the entire Gulf of Mexico out ahead of the storm is likely to promote uh, rather quick strengthening as the storm moves northward. And you'll see it that at some point here, there is an increase in shear as southwesterly flow starts hitting the storm from the backside. The concern is that this will occur just simply too late to materially limit Helene's intensity as it's coming into the coastline. If we look at the ECMWF soundings here, you'll see that right now, there's a little bit of shear out of the southeast and you can watch these values as I go forward in the forecast. And as it moves into the Gulf of Mexico, you'll see that those values are, are quite low, below 10 knots. And they don't really pick up until the last minute where just before landfall, you can see in this thumbnail here, there is some asymmetry to the storm as some of the dry air starts getting pushed in by southwesterly shear. And you see the shear values abruptly pick up to 20 or 25 knots. But that happens at the last moment before landfall and a few hours of that shear would not be enough to significantly weaken Helene and thus the expectation is for the storm to make landfall close to its peak intensity or just slightly below it perhaps uh, but unfortunately a strong major hurricane is now the expectation this is the national hurricane center forecast graphic from 10 a.m central time this morning maximum sustained winds right now 80 miles per hour and this graphic uh, is an experimental version that shows you the inland warnings and this really paints a perspective here that the entirety of Florida and much of Georgia will be impacted by hazards, even extending into South Carolina as well. These are wind hazards being plotted here. So red is hurricane warning. We talked yesterday about how the storm's fast forward motion will carry strong wind well inland with it. And this is the depiction of that hurricane force winds possible well inland of the landfall point and especially near and east of landfall. And there's a hurricane warning all the way down uh, close to Pinellas County, Pinellas is not itself in the hurricane warning, but down to the northern edge of Tampa Bay is in a hurricane warning and a hurricane watch for the Tampa Bay region is also in effect. Tropical storm warnings for almost the entirety of the state of Florida, only Pensacola and the western panhandle really being excluded here. The western side of the circulation will have comparatively weaker winds and a smaller wind field than the east side which will be much more expansive. You can see that right now with this orange area, which is that region of tropical storm force wind, and you can see how it is biased towards the eastern side. Ongoing hurricane warning in the northeastern Yucatan in Cancun, where we are seeing strong winds right now. And we could see uh, tropical storm force gusts well inland to Georgia, South Carolina, and the southern Appalachians, especially at higher elevations. The intensity here forecast to be maximum sustained winds of 125 miles per hour on this new advisory. This would make Helena category three on this forecast. Again, that seems to be, you know, kind of the floor now, just given the organization that we're seeing in the environment ahead of Helene, I'd say a category three is, you know, pretty likely, and it's even possible that it could be higher than that, depending on how the inner core organization goes over the coming 24 to 36 hours. We'll be watching this carefully, and there's always some uncertainty in that, Mother Nature is not fully predictable here, but a major hurricane nonetheless with winds well in excess of 100 miles per hour is the baseline expectation. And this will likely be an extreme event for this area of Florida. Storm surge, a big hazard here. Many, many feet, major extreme event in the Big Bend area, 10 to 15 feet maximum values forecast there from Alligator Point eastward down throughout the Nature Coast and several feet you know all the way down tampa bay five to eight feet could still cause tremendous problems and there will be evacuation notices that have already been given up and down this part of the florida coastline please heed those if you're receiving them water level rises could be significant all the way down to the florida keys due to the strong southerly winds coming in 
on the back or on the eastern side of Helene as it comes toward the north. This is a depiction just to show you what you can view at hurricanes.gov. If you want to see what the potential inundation is in your area, you can click on this product. It's called the Potential Storm Surge Flooding Map, and you can look at the areas that are expected to see water moving inland. And you can see that everything in red here above nine feet moving potentially even multiple miles inland from places along the Big Bend near the landfall point on the forecast and all the way down the nature coast here, significant swaths of coastline would be underwater in this kind of situation. So please heed those evacuation warnings. We'll also have inland flooding concerns. The storm will be moving quickly, but could still drop over 10 inches of rain in parts of Florida near the landfall point. You'll see the corridor of moderate risk for flash flooding, including a newly added high risk region in the Southern Appalachians. The storm will be weakened below hurricane strength by the time it gets up into Northern Georgia, but especially with the topography here, heavy, heavy amounts of rain are expected and flash flooding concerns are high there. So this will be a wide ranging storm with impacts across the southeastern part of the country. Everyone please be prepared for that and visit your local National Weather Service forecast office for the latest details on impacts to exactly where you are. That'll be about it for this particular update. I will have further updates throughout the day on my Twitter. Follow me at Tropical Tidbits on X. That's where I will be posting throughout the day. And at a minimum, I'll have another video tomorrow morning when the storm is in the middle of the Gulf of Mexico. Everyone, please take this seriously. This is a big storm, could be one of the biggest storms that some of these counties in the Florida Panhandle have seen in, in many a decade. So please be prepared and take this storm with appropriate seriousness. That's it for now. Thanks for watching.